Hi, I'm Tiffany Windsor. One of my favorite vintage techniques comes right from my mama Aline, where you take a slice of bread and a tablespoon of Aline's tacky glue and you can create the coolest projects. Anything clocks and timepieces are very popular right now, so I decided to take my Aline's bread dough recipe and create these clock faces. As I mentioned, the recipe that I'm using today is one slice of white bread and one tablespoon of Aline's Original Tacky Glue. I'm not going to actually mix my recipe today. You can go to our YouTube channel to watch that. But what you basically do is you take the crust off the bread, you put it into a cup, you add your glue, and you mix it all together. Then you put it into your hand and you knead it for about five minutes until it looks like this. Now what We've also done in this piece is added just a couple of drops of paint into it so you can actually color your dough or you can leave it as it in its natural look which is without any sort of paint added because what we're going to be doing on our pieces today is to add the rub and buff. So mix up your bread dough recipe. You can store these pieces in a plastic bag now I've just left this out on my studio table for the last week and just zipped it right up. You can also put it into your refrigerator if you want to store it longer or you can freeze these and then bring them back to room temperature. The first thing that you want to do is sometimes when you take it back out of the bag it's a little sticky so you can take a little bit of cold cream on your hand and that helps remove the stickiness and you just knead that right into your dough. Then you're going to squeeze off the size that you want and roll it into a nice ball. If you have clock faces that are rubber stamps you can certainly use them for this technique or I love this from the crafters workshop which is a stencil and this gives you a different effect than a, a rubber stamp. I just use the bottom of my bottle and I press down until I get the size that I want and I peel it off and that's going to be the back because this is smooth on the front. Just lay your stencil over your piece and press until the dough starts popping up through. So this is a completely different look for your piece and a different use for your stencil. So keep pressing until you get some interesting designs. Peel it up and there you have it. If you need to come back and press any of the edges back together you can do that. I don't mind with these pieces that they have an aged or vintage look so they don't have to be straight all along the edge. As they start drying you will notice that they will start to curl up so turn them over. You can see this is still wet on the back where it's white in the center turn them over as they're drying to help encourage them to lay flat. Again, because this has the look of vintage leather, I don't have a problem with them curling on the edges. So it's going to take several days for these pieces to dry completely. One thing I do want to mention that if you want to turn these into jewelry pieces, take an eye pin or just a push pin and press it into the top of your piece so that you have an opening that's going to create an opening for you for whatever type of finding that you want to put in there. So you would want to, when you actually put this into the piece, it's going to be cut shorter, but that will give you a place to actually glue your finding in. On my earrings, I put a hole in the top and the bottom. Once your pieces have dried completely, you want to check front and back and make sure that it's dried completely. Then you can start coloring them. I like to use the rub and buff for this. And we'll just start with the silver. And I put it on, you can use your finger, or I put it on to just a paper towel. And I start rubbing. If you don't want to get any of the rub and buff on your fingers, be sure and use gloves in this step. It doesn't take much when you want to antique over the top because 
these images are raised, that gold rub and buff is just going to catch the edges. Or you can add more if you want more gold. On my clock face pendant, I glued a bale onto the back and I found this ribbon pendant at my local craft store and then I just added some findings that fit through the bale in order to turn this into this pendant. On the earrings, as I mentioned, I added the pearls to it to give it a very vintage look. I'm Tiffany Windsor and I think it's cool to craft. <laughs>